Well, I did it. I got him blocked up on both sides, so this is going to be for a rug mount. So he's got to be laid out flat, whereas the fox with the tube skin, you use it for taxidermy or whatever. This can either be used for a rug mount or a taxidermy mount, just depending on what you want to do. What we're going to do is we're going to get him split out here, up the belly, up both legs, go right up the back of the leg, okay, and that'll spread it out real nice. Go right up to this this back paw. You go right up to that pad right there. Go ahead and stick your knife in there. Go up that back pad. We're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Almost same thing we did with that fox only. And the coyotes are a little bit tougher. Up the back very sharp, so I'm gonna give her a couple licks on a steel. Anyway, we got this leg here is the one I started on. So we're gonna go ahead and start skinning out the leg. change gloves. Sometimes these gloves get a little slack on you. Now we want to be able, kind of careful with this because it's going to be a taxidermy mount. It's going to be a rug mount. We can repair some holes in it. There's going to be some holes in this. I don't know if he killed it with a shotgun or a rifle. But sometimes you, you find out later that he used a, something heavy artillery on it. <laughs> But that's the way it is. But you do the same thing on the feet that you did with the fox. And get those feet skinned out and then we'll put those toes off. If you hear, you think with the economy being down then. slow down but actually the last two years have probably been the best years in a long time. Sportsmen don't seem to let the economy affect them as much as other other things. It's, uh, you've only got so much free time in your life and you, uh, you're going to spend the money. What happened? That fox's tail was full of dirt. Really took the edge off my knife. We're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this knife sharpened up a little bit. I use a lot of different types of sharpeners. This is a diamond one. It's got a coarse side. Then it's got a real fine side, kind of set the edge on it. We'll see how that works. Uh, anyway, we're going to go there. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, now we're going to do this leg here. Go right up to the back paw, the pad. We're going to go right on up there. A little bit sharper, but still in the way I want it. We want to go right up here. We want to show this uh, part of the leg here. I want to see that as we do the rug. But we'll see. Uh,
got right in there, that's for sure. I, I got the cut here. Now I tell you what, most these cute little coyotes, man, they got a messy rear end too, this guy does. We're gonna do just to him just what we did with that fox. See, and it's gonna be a rug mount, I can get away with not having the butt on there. This will be a little bit more labor intensive than doing that fox because we got a. Yeah, I just cut a hole in there. Like I said, remember I was telling you about how thin they are? Gotta be kind of careful. Make sure you get into that white stuff, that membrane. This one's going to be tanned in-house. I'll tan it myself and make a rug out of it. A black coyote like this, I'm hesitant to send it away. Sometimes your stuff has a way it ended up missing from the tanneries. And I won't mention any names for tanneries, but the one that uh, I used to use, I believe they... I don't know if they stole a piebald deer. They said they missed. They don't. They didn't ever received it. I know they did. So anyway, you know the customer wasn't too happy. But I try to tell everybody that when you're dealing with tanneries, you don't know what the heck is going to happen. Anyway. I offered him a free mount, deer mount, and stuff like that. And I know it wouldn't bring back his, it was a piebald deer hide. There wasn't, wasn't a lot of white on it, but there was some white. Uh, it was kind of odd. You know, I just don't. Anyway, we're cutting this leg loose here. We're just trying to get the leg loose. Remember what I said about the white? Keeping that white and it being okay when you do your cutting. You don't cut too deep, just cut, cut to the white. Anyway. That's what I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and get this paw cut loose. Oh my. Anyway, this will happen. Let's see if we can get these toes cut loose. A little bit more harder than a fox, so you gotta feel the where the joint is. back I can see it is a little bit tougher you almost got to get in the joints you can't snap these off at the bone usually at least at least I can't there might be better men out there to do it but Okay, now we got that leg. Got that leg cleared up. 
most of it. There we go. See how we did that? I'm going to do the other leg. Get it done. keep going I'm going to show you just exactly how to get this thing you got a lot it's a lot more to work with here on these cow down the coyotes I mean as far as work to do it just isn't quite as easy as a fox Scissors out, see if I can get some some work going on them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna get that one. That's for sure. Skin that down a little bit more so I can see what the heck I'm doing. I can't quite see. There we go. And of course, comes the worst. Let's see. You get your side cutter out, and you can cut the bones with those. Someplace. Okay, we got this leg loose now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get up around the butt here, like we did the fox. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get a little bit more on here. Sometimes, like that fox had all that dirt in his tail, really takes the edge off a knife. Anyway, you can see the butt here. What we're going to do is we're going to go same thing. We're going to go up around that. Man, that's a nasty looking butt. I mean, whew, isn't exactly smelling too good either. Can you see that? They got the same thing for scent glands, so you gotta make sure that you don't hit those. Anyway, you see how we got this cut up into here. We're going to bring that cut right on up into here. Man, he got good hair on him. Go ahead and tease that away so we can see what the heck we're doing. I'd hate to guess how many baby deer this old fella's killed in his life. I'll bet it's been more than one or two. People don't realize these guys are stone cold killers when it comes to baby deer, baby antelope, everything like that. Anything they can get in their mouth, they're going to eat, especially if it's meat. I like fox, they're, they're a killer too, but they don't take the baby fawns like these guys will. 
I know if people say they got to eat, but we have so many coyotes around here that it's just, I think it's hurting our deer population, hurting our rabbit population. It's, like I say, they're just a stone cold killer. And, uh, you get the white where you can see it, you know. And we're just going to go ahead. We're just going to do this stuff here. We're going to get up around that tail. We're going to get that tail out of there. And that'll help us out a little bit. Man, that's a big rear end on this guy. <laughs> what I'm doing is getting skinned around the tail. We're going to get that tail skinned out of them sooner or later. Let me tell you what, this time of the year you can put in a pretty busy day. I've had a pretty busy day today. I mounted a deer. I've done, I don't know, skinned the fox, skinned the coyote. I've got a deer to do. i got to get a deer ready to uh, get him skinned out. So, I mean, it's just, uh, you can end up being pretty gone darn busy sometimes. Well, let's see what we got here. We got to get the inside of this leg open a little bit. This is a big old male. We ain't gonna have to worry about him. But anyway, we're gonna cut around this anal area. We're not saving that. And with the full mount, taxidermy mount, you're gonna have to save that. And thing about working on these, you usually need a shower or something when you're done. You can't. That wild dog smell is pretty tough to get off sometimes. I hope I'm talking enough and giving you enough ideas. Okay. Oh, we got set of cojones here. Let me get rid of those. I don't know anybody saves those, but if you're doing a full mount and you got a rear shot of this guy, you want to save these for reference. That way you'll have, you'll be able to fill in his bag again. See the layer of fat here eating uh, this coyote. They got a pretty big penis on them. We're gonna get rid of that. We'll save it and uh, dry it. Somebody's always looking for something like that. I had a guy come in and he got some coon penises here. Oh, what was it? Uh, a month ago, I guess it was. Anyway, I'm going to cut this tail loose. Let's see if we can get it with this. Regular scissors. If we can't, we'll go ahead and do something different. Get the side cutter out. Go after it a little at a time. They got a pretty big tail on them. We'll have to skin this tail down a little bit to, to get him out of there. As you can see, oops, 
We got him. Let's turn him over. And we'll, get him, so we'll get this part skinned up a little bit. Sometimes if I'm making a video, I'm not paying as much attention. I'm thinking about what I got to say instead of paying attention to my skinning and that. Sometimes you'll end up with a couple nicks in your hide. Okay, there we go. We got that guy skinned on the rear end. We're going to go ahead and turn him around. I'm losing my block here. That's what I'm doing. You see how we got him there? This is another one we're going to go. We're going to go ahead and go right down the leg here. Go right down the paw. Right down the, the old leg. Right down the middle. That's what I do. Now a bear is a little different. All animals are a little different, but these predators like this, uh, or, or I should say doing these type of things, uh, a rug mount. Well, what we got to do is decide here where the center line is on this old boy. You see here? This is going to be a rug. We got to have it flat out. So. I'm going to go ahead and take a look. I want to, I got to keep enough so I, it's going to be an open mouth shell in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to split him right here. It'll, it'll be split almost from here all the way down. So we'll just go ahead and put our knife in there and go right down. Try to keep to the center. If you don't, what the heck? We'll trim her up. And I'll show you what, why I did this when we get down here. You want to stay out of the guts. Okay, we're going right down alongside the penis. Okay, we're going right down through the where the bag was. Now we got him split right right down the middle. Okay, so we got him down the middle here. We'll get him skinned out here a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Just go ahead and open that up a little bit so you can see what see what we're doing here. Smells this one isn't too bad. He gut shot, but at least it's sealed inside. He didn't got any gaping holes. You get one that's got gaping holes from a rifle or whatever, you end up being ripe. Now what we did is we split this up the paw here. Now we're going down to the center here. side. We'll get this done here. I'll show you. We'll get the leg done and 
We'll get this all ready to go. I, I mean, like this one here, you can make money on. This one here is a money job. The other, the fox wasn't a money job because it will be in the long run. But, you know, when you're sending them away to be tanned, I don't make a lot of money on those. And if I had a lot of freezer space, I'd probably throw them in there and get to them when I could. But, I'll tell you what, one thing, live or animals take up a lot of freezer space. A lot more than what I have. And I have a few freezers. You gotta watch out. These have the dew claws on them too. Just like the fox. So when you get down there, you gotta make sure that you, you end up cutting those off. And Very unusual coyote. Really dark. Really unusual. Neat. You know, it's just just something you don't see. I see a couple a year around this area. But, you know, it's, you don't see a lot of them. And for the many that are, that are hunted around here, there must not be a big population of them. There's some, though, so. No, we're still skinning here. Make a little hole there, but. Okay, now. I was telling you, we got this dew claw right here. It's right here, so I'm going to cut that, that loose. That way I can finish skinning that down. Otherwise, you try to skin that down, you'll end up tearing that skin loose, and you end up with a hole there that's... Now, this year... Tell you what, skinning <laughs> isn't a real glamorous part of this. You know, you have people come in and say, oh, they'd like to do this. And what you got to do is throw them a stinky old coyote or fox and say, well, this is the easy part here. You know, it's it just a lot of people have the wrong impression of taxidermy. They see the finished product being nice and clean and well done. And they don't have any idea what it took to get there. You know, I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just saying they just don't know. A lot of people want to get into taxidermy, haven't got a clue what it is. That's why I put out the videos so people can get a chance to look and see what it is before they jump into it. You know, some people, maybe they just specialize in certain animals, I don't know. But to make it as a taxidermist, you almost got to do about everything. I know a lot of guys are specializing now, but I don't think that's the right way to go. But then I don't know, maybe I'm all wet. You know, specialize in deer or fish or, or whatever. And, but anyway, this guy's got some fat on him. He's eating good. And what I do is I skin out the whole side. You see how I got this whole side skinned out? I go all the way to the back, at least to the center line, and that way. When I flip him over and do the other side, <laughs> he'll be about done when I get done. Yeah, this guy's as fat as a hog. That's unusual for coyotes. He, 
usually they're trying to scare up a living and uh, it's pretty tough going for them. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and see about getting this side done. But that's kind of a neat coyote though, isn't it? You got a neat head. We're going to go ahead and go down here. Get through that. Man, they got a tough pad on them. Anyway, we'll be down here. Go right across here, just where we want with the other one. And come right across here, just like so. And then we'll just go ahead and skin him out. Get a little bit of operating room here. And Get a paper towel and put it in there and try to sop up some of that blood. Anyway, and then we'll do, we'll get this leg skinned out here while we're at it. Let's go ahead and skin it out nice and slow. People come in the shop, they can't hardly stand it. I'll tell you what, you, you do a coyote or a fox, your shop, you don't realize it as you're doing it, but your shop actually smells afterwards. So you, you try to freshen it up a little bit. <laughs> This old boy out of his, uh, getting him out of his jacket. And, uh. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out a way to get around here where I can show you what's going on here. Maybe this side here will work out better. There we go. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and. We're getting kind of into the home stretch here. As you can see by looking at this coyote, there's going to be a lot of fleshing on this, which is just the way it is. And we'll see what we got going here for fleshing. I don't know if we're going to put fleshing or just skinning on this video. Check upstairs and see. I, uh, the flushing is covered in other videos anyway. But, okay, I'm down to the dew claw here. See that dew claw? Let's move him over a little bit and we'll get him cut off of there. Box. 
show. You see how I kind of peel that back like so? Then we can. A lot harder to do on the back feet. See, see what I'm doing here. I'm going to pull that up a little. I'm just kind of getting his feet out of here. And this will make a nice, be beautiful rug. I mean, I, I probably would have done a full mount on it if it was mine, but uh, some guy, some people, I like that, but what can you do? At least he's getting some kind of mount on it. Anyway, let's see what we got here for us. Okay, we got that foot done. And what we're doing is we're, we're uh, you see, I'm keeping that membrane line there and following it. That's what you have to do. You can do a good job that way. Just follow that white membrane line. If you run out of it, get another pull. Anyway, we're getting down to we're going to be getting down here where we're getting this guy out of his hide. What we're doing is we're just peeling him back now. Remember we went halfway down the back on the other side? Well, now we're going to go halfway here. And then all we'll have left to skin out is the head. And that's pretty well... Well, we got to be a little bit more careful on this head because it's going to be used in a mouth. So we have to make sure that we don't... Uh, cut the eyes too big. Don't screw up the mouth area. Uh, so, anyway. Got him completely out of his hide on the back. We'll move him up here a little bit so I can work on this shoulder area. Kind of 
same thing applies here. If you don't hang him up, you have to keep rolling him over. And uh, that's what we're going to do because I know a lot of people don't have a place to hang them up or, or whatever. But I'm going to get this down where I can see it a little more. There we go. But anyway, remember we only cut up so far on the neck hair. When we get it tanned and we get the form, we can finish cutting it. We'll just tan it as it is. I don't know if we're going to do this start to finish or not on the rug. It'll be interesting. I don't know what we're doing on this. I don't know if we've got anything else or not. Got a bleeder here. Sometimes you hit veins that start bleeding, and anyway, we're getting her. We're just taking the the rasslet around is is a little bit tedious, but what the heck can I do? Now we got him where we want him. It takes some time. Like I say, I thought that making videos would be easy, but actually it's, it's not. It's, it gives you a new appreciation for people that put together good films and videos, I'll tell you that. See, we're, we're getting down into the stroll area here. We've got the ear here. You see the ear cartilage right here? So we're going to go ahead and, and I'm going to get over here and see if we can get this cut off close to the head. And we did. That way it gives me a lot of ear to work with. Do it right, you end up with a big gaping hole in there. We don't want that. Okay, here's your here's your ear right here, the cartilage. Like I said before, the ears are on top, but the ear canal is down here. Toward the bottom side. Right there. Got hammered pretty hard in the head here too, so be interested to see what that looks like. You know, sometimes you have to repair a lot. And people are, they shoot it and then they decide they they don't think about doing any taxidermy until they get it, and you can't blame them. It's you know you don't know what kind of trophy it is. Now what we're doing is we're getting down to the eyes. You can feel the eyes right in here. So I've got to be kind of careful, especially if they've been shot around, like this one has. You've got to be real careful. We're going to go ahead and get to the mouth. We're doing a little bit of everything. Kind of see, kind of wearing out. Okay, I'm, I'm down to the eyes here. Anyway, sometimes you run into some tough cartilage. I'm going to sharpen up a knife here a little bit. Try to anyway. what happens. Okay. We got the eye. Let me see how I kind of 
cut the eye and the mouth there. You can see that it's a lot easier to do when it's hanging up. But we aren't hanging up, so we'll do it this way. Okay. This is the eye right here. finger in there. And we just can of do like so. Get your finger in the corner of the mouth. One thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't go in and have lunch without washing up after doing one of these guys. <laughs> Sometimes you find out your, your gloves have got a hole in them. <laughs> so you always want to make sure you wash up. I know old trappers are still skin without using gloves. Especially raccoons. And I mean Raccoon is one of the filthiest animals I've ever seen. Okay, we're going around the nose here now. We're going to be careful because this is going to be a mount, remember? So we have to be somewhat careful how we do the nose and that. We're going to go ahead and just... Uh, work on it, just kind of skin her down. Yeah, he's been shot up in the head pretty good. But what I'm doing, I'm skinning that nose pretty well down there. I might use an artificial nose or I might just build this one up. You know, I don't know. I Sometimes I like the artificial ones, other times I don't. the nose, but that's not bad. Always rebuild noses. I, I, I like doing that kind of stuff. A lot of guys don't, but I do. I don't know, just part of the work, I guess. Now if you want another trophy, you can, you can save the skull and boil it out if it isn't too shot up. That's a pretty old dog right there, boy. He's a nice, mature guy. Big teeth. I mean, he he got a little age on him, it looks like. We might save him. Anyway, I'm going to show you what we got done here now. The heavy son of a gun. There we go. We got, this, we got our coyote all skinned out. See, the mom will put him in the refrigerator. Look how black that face is. That's a neat dog. Neat dog. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this tail skinned out here. Now, this one here will be flat. So you'll have to take and. Uh, it's got to be split all the way down. Coyote tails are a little bit more difficult to get out than an old fox tail. Well, you see what I'm doing here? I'm getting this this fox tail. Just like so. And you might as well go ahead and skin her down a good five, six inches. Because they don't they don't pull worth the darn. I mean, they don't pull with the darn. <laughs> Just go ahead and get in the center. You can kind of see it ridge of tendons along here, right here. That's what I use to guide me down the center. 
I'll show you again. They're neat animals, but they're just uh, they're vegetarians. They'd be all right, but they kill they kill so much stuff. You know, it takes quite a bit of meat to keep a body like this going. A good body. I mean, he's a good forty pound dog at least. He's a big dog. So well, I should say coyote in case somebody comes in late on this. Looks like I'm doing a dog here. We don't want that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and skin him down some more because just from past experience I know that I've had to get those all the way out. It's just a real son of a gun. We're going to give her a try here. Man, that tail feels awfully grisly. Now we're going to give her a try and get our tool out see what happens. What happens is usually you end up pulling them apart. Then you go back to doing it again. Well, we're going to see what happens here. I got her down there a ways. I've about got five inches out of there. Put her in the hole I think it'll work on. Then what I do is I just go ahead and get that right in the center there, hold that together, and just pull. Just kind of pry down like so. I'm getting a hold of it. If you don't get it in the center on the bone, you'll end up uh, breaking it loose. Channel lock works good for this. Well, that isn't bad. We've got the whole tail. That's not bad. So, we'll just go ahead and uh, get that underneath there. Get our knife in there. Then we'll, we've got that where we can split that baby down. And when we salt it, I'm, I just run my knife up the empty sleeve there. Now it's now it's wide open. I can get salt. Can you see it there? It's all the way wide open. I can get salt down there all the way to the end. That'll be turn out beautiful. We'll go ahead and do these ears too while we're here. Now if you watch the first part of this video or if it's going to be together, you'll notice we go to the outside of the ear cartilage. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Get it started here a little bit. Get it down to the cartilage anyway. That way I can get my tool in there. You can use a knife and just keep going like this. Kind of try to get it inverted. You know? And uh, just keep working on it that way. Just like so. And you just keep pulling it and keep inverting it like so. You can do this with most mammal ears. I mean, it takes a little bit more to do it this way, but uh, you can do a good job. You got to get these ears turned so we can either put an ear liner in them or or do something with the ears to get them stiff. We need we need ears stiff. So anyway, you see how I'm turning that inside out just by using the knife. Now this one here has been shot up a little bit. That's the head shot on that. A lot of cartilage in here. 
we're just going to go ahead and keep working that down because most people don't have that ear tool that I have, you know. Another thing what you can do, you can take and what I got is a, I got a ball, we call it a fleshing ball. But anything, you can put anything up in there to force that ear to go up. And it's just like anything else, when you're skinning, you see that white, you just go ahead and that's where you cut. This one here is kind of bloody, so I'm just kind of taking a guess where that is. I can see a little bit of it, but not a lot. And this is going to be... We're getting there. Kind of a bloody mess, this one, to see it. But you can see, we're getting it turned inside out, and that's what you want. This takes a while. This is not something you're going to learn overnight here. Doing ears is probably one of the hardest parts of, of doing this type of stuff. Without screwing them up, that is. You can do them, but getting them done right is a whole different deal. You see, I've got a hole here that made by buckshot. But we're getting there. You know, we're. You got hammered pretty good. I'm going to try to get this knife a little bit sharper. And get one of them sharp anyway. Jeez. Now the problem is this year, this year was hammered pretty hard by the shotgun. And what you got to also remember, we got that ear pretty much turned. You got to remember to get that extra meat off of this ear at the bottom. That's where the ear bases are. You see how much junk is on there? Pretty good amount of stuff. When you flesh that out, you'll even find more. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this ear. And find it. <laughs> okay. There we go. Anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of teasing that back. And this one here, go ahead and do this by hand if you want. Doesn't matter. I use, I like using my tool because it saves me time. But for, for this video here, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. Now, if you're going to use a set of ear liners, you have to take the cartilage out also. I'm, I do my own with Bondo, so no 
it, but that's a whole different story there. But you'll hear good and bad on that. I've had nothing but good luck with it. So, I kind of try to tend to stay with the way the things are working pretty good. Uh, there's no sense in upsetting the apple cart, as they say. I'm going to go ahead and let's see, get this one turned inside out a little bit more. I'll see if I can show you what I mean by getting something up in there. And you can see the seam right here. This is something, this is finesse work here. This is, this is what some people can't do because they don't have the patience. Now, I, I use this flexing ball. You can use anything that's got kind of a, a rounded edge on it, you know. Just get some pressure on it and end up with a... Anyway, there we go. We get about got this one turned. And it takes a little bit longer to do it this way, but I'm doing it because most people don't have that ear splitting tool. And this one, this here, will show you how to do that without that. You just got to take your time. By all means, take your time. We've got that baby about split out all the way down to where it should be. You see that? There isn't a lot left in there to... Anyway, that's that baby. Got some junk on the bottom of the ear here. We'll take off when we flush it. But uh, we got the ears turned. Now we're going to go ahead and get the lips turned. I'm going to get my flushing bead. Right here. Oh boy, my shoulder's going to give me problems today. Okay. It's kind of like this is uh, that extra stuff I was telling you about around the ear. Get that stuff off of there before. But do all, all that when you're getting ready to flesh. I'm just showing you some of that stuff. Anyway, we're going to get the mouth up here. What we want to do is we're going to split these the lips on this. Because we got a... This is going to be a taxidermy mouth. So i got to have these lips split. What I'm doing, I'm just cutting them so they're folded up like so. See if we can get you. Let's we'll see if we can get this. You see that there? This is the lip, the inner lip. Just go down along there. Make sure you don't cut through all the way through. This is this is something that takes practice too. You just don't. You can go in and start hacking away, but more times than not, you end up doing. A little bit more damage than you should. You see how I'm kind of getting that? And that way, when we put it in the form, we'll be able to get the lip tucked up in there. You can kind of see that. I'm
see how that's kind of folded over there. And then we'll just take and turn this like so. And we'll just go ahead and go ahead. Put a little pressure on it. Sharp knives really help at this stage. Now if you salt that and pickle it and get ready to tan it, you can you be able to see just exactly what you gotta do. But anyway, this here we got that baby pretty good. So anyway, we got the ears turned, the lips split, we got the nose out. I mean, this thing's ready to be fleshed. But you can see how dark this coyote is compared to any other coyote. Look how dark that is. We got nice dark hair, beautiful hair. And then his face is just. Look how black that is. That's neat. Anyway, nice big male coyote. And then when we, after we salt this and get it pickled, we'll go over it again. We're just getting the main stuff off now. You see how that's kind of peeling down ahead of itself? Right here. Flushing is a, can be kind of tedious sometimes, but it's one of those jobs in taxidermy you have to do. See, I'm going to tan this myself. I'm going to break it myself. Give you an idea how we do it. But anyway, just clean your knife off. Get most of the heavy stuff at this point. You just kind of move your, your fur back and forth on your board. Now this board I have here, you can substitute a four or six inch piece of plastic PVC pipe. And do exactly the same thing. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to keep fleshing this just like this. Peel it all the way down. Get it down. And then uh, when we come back, I'll show you what, what it's going to look like when we're almost done. But you just keep pushing that down, the hide, just like so. You see that? And it kind of pushes right ahead of you. And you clean off your blade once in a while. Now if you're real careful you can use a knife, a sharp knife, and just kind of trim that off. But a, a pushing like this seems to do a better job. Anyway, when we come back I'll show you what it looks like when we're about done. Okay, we got this thing fleshed out here. Uh, this black coyote. We're going to go ahead and uh, salt him down good. And this is what you're going to do if you send him away to be tanned. Or if you're going to tan him in house. What this salt does is it, it sucks the moisture out of, out of the hide and will help preserve it. Just go ahead and give it a liberal coating. You can get this salt at farm supply stores. Make sure you get down into the feet. Don't be chintzy with your salt. It's cheap. Get a bag like this, 50 pound bag for about five bucks. So, you don't want to be chintzy on that stuff. 
when you figure all the time you've got in your your stuff already. So, but we just go ahead and get down the feet. And then what we'll do is I'll hang this up, and then we'll allow that to drip away from it. And then uh, we're going to get a tanning solution fixed up. And uh, you see how I split that tail all the way down? Now we can get uh, salt all the way in there. And what you do is you just go ahead and start at the top there and just push it down ahead of your thumb. And, uh, see, if you don't split that tail out, you can't do that. It makes for kind of a you can end up with some slippage in there. Now we've got this thing completely salted. What we're going to do is we're going to hang that. And let it drip away for probably four hours. And then what I'll do, we'll get our, we'll pickle it first. And then we'll get our tanning, we'll tan it later. You got to watch your pH on that if you want it between a one and two and uh, stir it up leave it in there a couple days stir it up make sure that it's uh, keeping the pH right rinse it out then you got to neutralize it after it's been in the pickle you want to get that pH up about six seven again so what you do is you mix up uh, a tablespoon of uh, baking soda or one ounce per gallon of water about five gallons put it in there let it sit in there a half an hour hour swish it around a little bit and uh, then take it out hang it up wring it out let it let it uh, get most of the moisture off of there and uh, then you're ready to tan it now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, I tan. I put some tanning cream on the back half here. Got it on the legs. What we're doing is we're wor working this way. Just go ahead and put some tanning. I'm going to shake this up again. I, I'm using this McKenzie tanning oil. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get the legs over here. I'm going to get this to the head out. end. What we're going to do is we're going to pour some tanning solution right here and what I do is I, I, I warm it up a little bit in hot water just put in a bucket of hot water seems to work a little better that way pour some out on there and what I do is I get it on the legs down into the paw area just kind of swish it around just like so And just can't kind of keep working up it's uh cover all areas get the feet real good and you'll notice some some areas where where it was shot or whatever you may have a little bloody area still uh, not, not a lot you can do with that until after it's tanned uh, you notice the skin is a little bit black not a lot you can do I what I'm going to do is, when blood gets on there, hard to get it off. We'll, we'll wash it up good after we get this thing tanned. Get the oils out from the tanning solution here. It's real oily. That's what gets in your uh, leather fibers and actually makes it soft. So, we're making sure everything's covered. The bottom lip, nose, around the eyes, the ears are covered really good. Just kind of need that in there. We're going to be ready to go. I will let this sit overnight. I'll well, make sure. Got the legs here. I got deer hide here I'm doing too, deer cape. Okay. I'm going to take another look at her, make sure she's good. Get everything covered. Okay. Now what we do is we cover this up with a plastic bag. 
and uh, that'll keep it from drying out. Okay, just like so. Just keep the moisture in there a little bit. That way it won't dry out and get hard. Give that tanning solution a chance to get in there. But anyway, that's what we're doing after it's tanned for a day. We'll, we'll rinse it real good uh, in the, some warm soapy water. Uh, let it dry out a little bit and then we'll start breaking it to get it soft for the rub. But that's another day. Well, he's done tanning. He was in, I let him sit overnight with tanning solution on him. I rinsed him out in uh, lukewarm water to get the tanning solution off. And then I, what I did is after I rinsed it off, I went ahead and filled my sink up with uh, soapy water, some Dawn dish soap. And I went ahead and washed him real good. And then I wrung him out. And then I filled up my sink again halfway with uh, water, a couple gallons. And I put some uh, fabric softener in there. And then I put him back in there and let him soak for half an hour. And what that does is this gives the fur just a little bit better smell. It smells like uh, tanning or downy now. And uh, you can see it. I hung it up to dry then overnight. It's been hanging a, a day or two. And now I'm just, uh, I wanted to get the moisture out of it. And now what I'm doing is I'm just putting it over this trash can here. Spread out just to let it dry a little bit. And now as it starts drying like this here, I'll start pulling on those areas that look like they're starting to dry. And that'll help in the breaking process. We're going to let this dry out for a day or so. Then we'll start uh, breaking it. Getting it soft. It'll make a nice rug. 